person. Uh, how often does it happen to you uh, to sit uh, in front of the piano just because you're happy or because you're sad, uh, because, uh, because of the emotion? Uh, or most of the time you're in front of the piano because you're preparing to a concert? Um, a good question, I would say. Um, honestly, I practice when I have to prepare concerts. Um, actually, it's a, it's a question of time because I have so many things to do in normal times. I mean, now it's, everything is different, but normally um, I'm preparing concerts and projects. And on the other side, I have so many things like admini administrative things, like uh, talking to my office, to my management, to my PR people. So there's not so much time left to just enjoy and sitting around to uh, at the piano and just to play because it's 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 uh, an emotional moment. I also have a family which needs time. Now during this Corona crisis, when I had to uh, to stay at home for so long, many of my friends told me, "Well, it's great for you. Now finally you have time to practice." But I must say it was so. Uh, so different, uh, difficult, the, these moments just to handle the whole situation because as a sudden everything was closed and uh, I had over 70 cancellations of concerts and I earned my life with playing concerts so it was a big crisis I had to handle and I had no free mind just to sit down and play the piano, I had to arrange uh, this crisis and just to see how will we survive, uh, honestly. So. Um, yeah, but, uh, but then I, uh, when everything seemed to be kind of arranged, I tried to be back at the piano to be inspired, but it was hard. I must say, during the last couple of months, just to sit down and play for joy, there was not so much joy around us, I must say, because, I mean, worldwide. So I hope now it will change again and that I can really enjoy playing the piano again, like I did here last night and uh, hopefully also tonight. Why do you build the program this way? Why after Bach you have Mendelssohn, <coughs> Mendelssohn and not Schubert, for example? Mm -hmm. And uh, why do you uh, put all the pieces one after another mm -hmm. without any pause and it seems like this whole, uh, you know, uh, army moving towards? Mm -hmm. Why do you do that? Well, the combination of composers is um, well, kind of my favorite composers, which I really adore and which I think I could play uh, and being convincing to, to, to the audience. I mean, the combination between Bach and Mendelssohn is like Mendelssohn was a big admirer of Bach and he was the first one who conducted again the St. Matthew's Passion. So there's a big connection between these two. Also, Schubert was a big fan of Bach and also uh, Mendelssohn and Schubert, the, they were kind of connected. And then um, the idea, my idea yesterday was, um, as the times are different, we have one hour, 10 minutes, one hour, 15 minutes in one. There's no intermission. So we have to build like a tension from the beginning to the end. And I'm always a big fan of programs which, which have a, like a red line the whole time. So the audience has the chance to see a performance, but also to feel this thing is a, a one, is a, a whole idea in, 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 with different pieces in between. And of course, I understand that people like to applaud, which is great for us as well, because I was waiting for this for five months to have applause. But I think also in these times it's great just to sit and just to enjoy and for everybody, for me, but also for, for the audience, just to have the chance just to, to, to go down completely for one hour more or less and just to listen and to let the music inside without these interruptions with applause and, and coughing and so and I tried this, this was just like a project yesterday and there's no reason after a Bach choral, like I played yesterday, which is a very intimate piece, to have big applause. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. After this one bigger Schubert impromptu, of course, there's applause because it's very, very acrobatic, I would say, or uh, uh, virtuos. And um, so I wanted to have one breath for one and a half hours, more or less. And I think 
it's it's great to have these moments in lifetime and not just try to be so so energetic uh, during a concert so just relaxation inside and outside and it's, it's good to have this i think <laughs> so last year we didn't have uh, much time to ask you about your project with uh, over bar mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> so um, how did this whole thing uh how did it happen and how did was it elaborated into your project with the uh, Beethoven variations? Hmm. Well, the, um, in 2015, actually, I got, a, I got a call from my record label, from my producer at that time, and he said, I send you um, an MP3, uh, like a computer, uh, uh, an, uh, a computer recorded piece of music, so listen to it and tell me what you think. So I heard this and it sounded like music of Bach, but it had some different harmonies and also instrumentation, as long as I could hear because it was played by a computer. So that was actually the first piece Arash Safayan composed about the music of Bach. So he took original pieces and composed a new work for piano and orchestra and vibraphone as a second solo instrument um, about original pieces of Bach. So he transported Bach's music into our days today with his own meaning and his own feeling about how Bach could sound today in his opinion and I was very convinced by this music and this piece and I mean I performed it here and the public liked it very much and it was a big big success <clears throat> so I decided well I asked the composer if he would agree that we will work together again when we finished Überbach years ago. And he said, yes, sure, but let's see what we will do. So the Beethoven year 2020 approached, and I thought, how about this time we think about Beethoven? Could we do something? I mean, it's much more difficult because the music of Beethoven is more personalized. Baroque music is very straight, so it's easier in a way to arrange it, to recompose it, to composed it in a new way, even jazz musicians used Bach a lot to, to do improvisations, but classical style like Beethoven, of course, is, is more demanding because it's already very personal. So, um, Ars Safayan was thinking about it and it took him a while and, and then he called me and said, yes, I have an idea. So Beethoven's music um, is there. But what we can do is like classical composers did. I write a piano concerto in the style of variations about original themes. Beethoven did it himself, Diabelli variations. Uh, Rachmaninoff did the Paganini variations. So many composers used the same way how to compose a piece. So Arasafayan did this theme of Beethoven, variations for piano and orchestra. That's the whole story and it's a great piece. So if I rearranged the whole thing for the festival so that it will be, uh, it, it will be the piano the playing solo? Enough? Well, you know, I got the call on Saturday, yeah, that the orchestra is not able to play. It was very late. So it's, it, it was not possible to arrange everything. It's, not, it's, it's just, it's a piano concerto and I need orchestra. So at least I will play two short pieces as an encore and the rest of the program will be original Beethoven. So I come back next year and then I play the whole thing. Cool. <laughs> how do you prepare for the work with new material? Uh, how do you study uh, notes? How do you, uh, do, do you also uh, study some you know, text or some additional uh, information about the, uh, the composer or the time? How do, how, how do you play the do you listen uh, the performance of other uh, musicians? Well, it depends of the of the period of the composer. I mean, for example, if I start to work on a new piece of Beethoven, um, I don't need to read about Beethoven because I know enough about the composer, um, and I have my my own way how to uh Beethoven or classical composers. Sometimes. I do listen to other recordings, yes, just to have an idea how others play the piece or what their way is to interpret the piece. 
but not very often. I have my own idea and my own thinking about music and uh, style and tempo and dynamics. Um, so this, this is the way how I approach to composers I know. On the other side, if there's a new work by a new composer I don't know, for example, this new piece of Ara Safayan, um, what he did for me, he recorded every single movement by computer. So I had at least an idea how it will sound because I only have my part. I don't know how it sounds with the orchestra. So that's very helpful. And um, this is how I could approach the, a, a very new piece. But also there I have my own ideas very quickly. When I learn a piece, I feel and if I, if I know the composer, of course, I talk to him and ask him, what do you want? So tell me, it's your piece. And that's a good way. I can't talk to Beethoven anymore, unfortunately. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs>